Divorced men of Reddit. What moment with your former wife made me think, yep, I'm asking this girl to divorce me. Story one. When she presented a picture of our four-year-old daughter and me laying next to each other on the couch watching Blue's Clues to our marriage counselor as evidence of my inappropriate conduct around our kids. Thank God he saw right through that nonsense immediately and told her to knock it off. Edit. There is no Joe. Hash not me Steve edit too. Many asked, so here's the deal. We've been divorced almost five years now. The process wasn't fair, but that wasn't really my ex's fault. No allegations of child abuse or misconduct were brought up against me during the proceedings, so that was good. They wouldn't have flown for a minute in court anyway. Our kids are older now and every day are becoming better equipped to see and understand the difference between what's reasonable and right and what's simply just bad insane. And it's not working out all that well for their mother, who hasn't changed her MO much, if at all, since we parted ways. So it goes. I'm happily remarried now to a woman with kids of her own, kids who were friends and schoolmates of my kids before she and I even got to know each other. They're all our kids now. Life is good. No more shenanigans. Story 2. I endured a physically, emotionally, and mentally abusive relationship for over six years with my first wife, four of which we were married. There were many, many instances that should have caused our marriage's demise. The proverbial straw that broke the camel's back, though, was eight days after I had major oral surgery. Due to an alarms medical occurrence, I had to have 28 teeth cut out and two holes drilled into my sinus cavities from top of the back of my gums. She and I were in a grocery store parking lot, and I asked her not to start an argument in the store because it's a small town and I was so tired of being those people. Her reaction was to backhand me in the mouth six times, or at least I counted six times because I'm pretty dang sure I lost consciousness. I just remember waking up when we were pulling into our driveway while she's upsetting out because my face is against the window and blood is coming from my mouth like a fountain. Story 3. We met and spent the first seven years of our married life on the West Coast, then moved east. Five years later, I took a job back on the West Coast, but it was the middle of the school year, so I went out ahead and lived on my own until everyone could join me. Things hadn't been very good between us for a while, but I hadn't articulated it to her, or even myself, beyond vague feelings of dissatisfaction. One weekend, out there on my own, I decided to take a day and drive to one of my favorite towns, a town in which I had lived long before I knew her, a town we had visited often while married. It was late afternoon was about to head back to my hotel when I realized that I could visit a particular beach that had special meaning to me from my earlier life there. I stopped at a convenience store, grabbed a Grolsch like I used to drink on that beach, and drove out there. Hiked out to a specific spot I remembered, sat down, popped the beer, and looked out over the ocean. And it hit me that I hadn't done that in over 20 years. Whenever we'd visit the area, I'd suggest stopping at the beach. But she wasn't interested and would always veto the idea. I'm sure reading this it seems like the tiniest thing. But it was the catalyst for me realizing just how completely dissatisfied I was with our relationship. I think from the time I sat down, I knew it was over within maybe 10 minutes. Just sitting there, sipping my beer, looking at the ocean. Edit. Rip inbox and my first gold. Thanks, Redditors. I seriously thought this would be one of those I'm late to the thread so no one will read it posts. Thank you for all the incredibly kind words. Grolsch is indeed a Dutch beer. It can be had in distinctive green bottles with hinged, resealable ceramic caps. I chose it because when I had lived in that place before and had headed out to that specific beach with friends, I'd always bring Grolsch. Story 4. Preface. We were doing a trial separation. She moved into the spare bedroom of our apartment. Divorce had been thrown around, but we still spent time together and slept together. I wasn't seriously considering divorce, but rather counseling, etc. Up until the day I came home from work at the same time I came home every day, and she was in her room being messed by some random guy she met on Tinder. She had not told him she was married. I kicked him out of the apartment and made it clear to her I would be moving out as soon as possible. Edit. Must add that she expressed interest in counseling as well. And that we discussed ground rules for the separation. One of which was, do not alarm other people. Edit 2. Thanks for all the love. For those asking, I moved out because I couldn't afford the apartment on my own. I didn't kick the guy's butt, but I did tell him while punching the door that he had three minutes to get out of my apartment. I said if he wasn't out in three minutes, I was going to break down the door, and it wouldn't be to shake hands. Proud of that line from enraged me. Usually, I'm not very articulate when angry. He was out in a little over two minutes. Story 5. Fifteen years in, and I find texts on her phone. Completely blindsided. No clue she had it in her to cheat. Told me it was just texting. Begged for forgiveness. I caved. A month later, checked the phone bill to find that it never stopped. Confronted her again. Cue more begging and more denial on my part that she would let the life we had built go down in flames. This went on for a few months. So many promises. One night, I caught her on the phone when she thought I had left. Suddenly, it's not just texts. Sometimes it was phone calls, too. 
Just a friend she could talk to that she let things go too far with. Promised to break all contact. Swore it was never physical. Then I found emails. She detailed things that made me sick to read, but also included descriptions of his house. She broke finally, but swore it was all just in the line of duty. That's how she met, you see? Visiting nurse service, and this guy was a client. Promised she was done. Loved me, you see? No chance she was going to let 15 years go like that. I wasn't buying it anymore, though. She announced she was going out one night with a work friend. Promised they were only going to the bar, then she'd be home. Maybe late, but not too late. She had taken over her own phone account by then, but wasn't bright enough to understand that Google Latitude was still showing me where she was, and I wasn't about to show my hand. She kissed me goodbye and beelined right for his house, and was there until the wee hours of the morning. Once I knew where she had headed, I called her dad and my best friend to keep me from doing anything dumb. I will love them both forever for keeping me calm while my world went upsetting insane all around me. My father-in-law offered to stay with the kids and wait for her to get home. Around 3 a.m. while couch surfing my buddy's place, she sent me a nasty text asking where the alarms I thought I was. I texted her a screenshot of her little GPS dot at her boyfriend's and let her know I'd be sending her some paperwork soon. Story 6. She started working at a job with people that were closer to her age, 25, 30, instead of a job where her co-workers were in their late 40s, early 50s. She wanted to go out and hang out with them rather than come home and be with her family, myself and our at the time, two-year-old daughter and a godforsaken cat that she just had to have. There were a lot of other little things that added up over time, mainly her desire to drink and drive without our daughter in the car, thankfully, and four days a week of not coming home until two or three in the morning and not telling a soul where she was or what she was doing. After a month of that, she said she wanted a divorce. I fought it with everything I had for three months, decided to go to counseling, where the counselor asked her ex-wife, in your mind, in this marriage already over? After a literal five-minute silence, I had the answer I needed. Separated a week later and divorced a year later. We're still civil for our daughter's sake. But I will say that after the initial shock of actually going through a divorce after us both proclaiming to do whatever it takes and never getting a divorce, I will say I'm much happier now. I was able to save up and buy a house for my daughter, and I, which I never would have been able to do had I stayed married. Story 7. I'd found evidence of potential cheating. Despite this, I still was willing to work on things. I confronted her about her feelings towards me, not the cheating. When I point-blank asked her if she was interested in counseling or trying to work things out, she said no. That was the first time it would have been better to have stuck with it. There was a tumultuous time after that where we flip-flopped and were trying to work things out. Sorta. She complicated things. I had broached the cheating with her and we made rules during our maintenance period. One of which was that she was no longer to have contact with her friend she was cheating with. I ended up finding out that she was still Facebook friends with him. When I calmly explained why this would hurt me, she turned it around that I was the bad guy. I started living with a friend at this point. During my drunken, half-sobbing tirade where I explained everything to him, I finally realized that I don't want to be with this woman anymore. She doesn't love, respect, or care for me at all, and I deserve those things. Moved out, moved on, and have since found a wonderful woman that I will marry in April, even though I figured I would never get married again. Edit. I got hurt, it sucked. It sucked really bad. I never expected to get a divorce. I took some time to work on myself and address the mistakes that I made in my marriage and past relationships. I ended up finding a person who 100% is in sync with me and communicates like a mature adult. She is super smart and helps me through my emotions as I help her through hers. I did a complete 180 on marriage. It wasn't a struggle. It feels right. I thought long and hard after I had decided to get married. I wanted to make sure I was not making the same mistakes again. I believe I've found my true partner and each day gives me more reasons to believe that to be true. Story 8. I always refused to raise my voice during arguments, which usually made her crazier and scream louder. After one such argument, during which our three-year-old daughter was playing upstairs, she started coming down at the same time her mother was storming up the stairs like a child of comparable age. Our daughter was in the way and her mother got in her face and screamed, God, I upsetting hate you, move! Of course, my daughter came to me, hurt. That was the moment I decided it was over. Edit. This was 13 years ago. My daughters are now 16 and 12. Unfortunately, I found out the hard way that, particularly in that day and age, family courts were seriously skewed towards the favor of the mother, in many cases unless there was proof of serious neglect, Medicaid abuse. The girls, I believe, are fairly well adjusted and doing okay. Their mother changed in regards to her direct dealings with them, however continued, and still uses them as a way to hurt me whenever she sees an opportunity. I've taken her to court for custodial interference, which is punishable up to 30 days in jail and a $1,000 fine. And they slapped her on the wrist with not so much as an admonishment. It's messed. 
but I do the best to keep an eye on the situation and try to give them as much stability as possible when they're around me so they have an idea of what normal is. Story 9. Me and my ex were always having ups and downs. Cutting up my clothes when I was out with friends, cutting my hair when I was asleep, random violence and screaming fits. The usual, we did the normal things couples were supposed to do, and it seemed to prolong the episode for a time. We bought a house, for example. Well, after we had the house, the next thing we needed was a cat. She loved it very much when it was a kitten, but as it grew up, it became more independent. It's a cat, duh and she couldn't take this and became aggressive towards it. I remember walking in one day and she picked up the cat and threw it up in the air. It bounced off of the ceiling, and then I threw her butt out of the house, bouncing her stuff of the curb. I still have the cat. Story 10. My best friend was in Air Force stationed in South Korea and got married right before he left. After about six months, he flies her out to visit. First night she was there, she would go outside to puff more and more. She left her phone and he looked at it when someone texted her. She was texting two guys on base asking, do you want to me when my husband goes to work? He got out of Dodge when she went home. Turns out she was cheating on him the whole time he was gone and was going to text him she wanted a divorce anyway. Edit. I realized I said Doge not Dodge. I can't change it because it's funny and comments wouldn't make sense lol edit. Forgot to add that she tried to spin it back on him and was annoyed he looked at her phone and didn't trust her. Story 11. I could say it was the day I found the sexting with a doctor from her hospital, but no. I knew even before that... I am a widower and visited the cemetery twice a year to visit my first wife's grave. First wife's brother asked me to send him a picture of the headstone as he wanted to post something on social media on the anniversary of her death to say something in her memory. I happily obliged and sent him the pic. My second wife gets home later that night and is annoyed at me because she had to find out on social media that some other woman had her last name. I was dumbfounded as she knew I was married before, knew that she had my last name, never mind that other woman had the name first, and yet somehow, found a way to make yet another thing about her. Everything was always about her, and apparently nothing was off-limits to her narcissism. That was the moment I realized this is not someone I could be with every day. Story 12. She had lost her job again, after quitting a decent one because she didn't get along with her boss. Anyways, a few months go by and I'm doing everything. Cooking, laundry, dishes, yard work, etc. I'd ask the kids what does mom do all day and they said she plays on the computer all day. So the final straw came when I came home from work and had to wash dishes so I could make dinner dinner is made so I tell family it's ready. She comes to get a plate and serves herself first instead of our youngest child who was four at the time and couldn't serve himself. As I watched this unfold it dawned on me. If I'm going to do all the work I might as well do it by myself or find a partner to share the load with because she clearly didn't want to be on my team. Edit. To those mentioning depression. Yes she was and maybe still is. She was on meds for it and we went to counseling after the birth of one of our kids and she had postpartum depression. At this time, she stepped out on our marriage with at least three guys. I finally got proof with hidden caller ID and a voice-activated tape recorder hidden under our bed. Yep, gotta hear them having love. Long story, but we stayed together. IDK if the counseling helped or not. I also need to add that she was never good with money. Blew a small inheritance in record fashion. She would give me money for joint bills and I was handing it back over so she could put gas in her car or she had bill of hers due. One year, we got a nice tax refund and she promptly tells me she owes her stepdad $2,000. UTF? Still stayed? In short, my earlier response was to OP's question. And the edit is some background, so you know that this was something that had been building for years. Story 13. Sometimes when my ex and I used to fight, she would decide that she wasn't going to go to some function or honor plans we had previously made. Sometimes very last minute, like hanging out with friends, dinner with my family, etc. For example, we got into some argument, and she decided to not go to my only sister's wedding. BTW, the wedding was that day. A year later, she did the same thing during a fight. She threatened me again, telling me that she decided to not go with me to Texas for a reunion with some of the guys I served in the Marines with. I didn't fight at this time and just said okay. Several days later, she tried to renege on her threat and actually tried to turn it around on me. Saying how mean I was for not wanting her to come with me, I told her that I was actually relieved that she wasn't going. I could hang out with my friends that I hadn't seen since I got out, and it would be nice to not have to worry about her crazy, insecure drama. That realization that I was going to be happier without her was the moment I knew we were done. Story 14. Wasn't married, but about one month away from marrying. We worked together at the same job for about a year, but she was first shift and I was second. We both had weekends off so we could and did things on the weekend. We had got everything paid for and were set. One weekend, actually on my birthday, I went to get a haircut before we went out for the night. I weirdly noticed this one car in the parking lot of our apartments. Didn't think too much as there was a stuffed ton of cars that would come and go. She had gone up to a casino with her mom the previous night and stayed overnight. That wasn't uncommon as they were both huge gamblers. 
I got back and did some cleaning and she walked in. She looked at me and threw her ring on the table and said, We need to talk. I think I like Joe more now and decided I want to be with him. I don't need the ring and you can cancel the wedding. It all clicked that car I seen was Joe's. She didn't go up to the casino with her mom but with Joe instead. Even more messed up as I called her mom to see how close they were to home and she covered for her daughter. I then come to find out her friend Joe was an ex-lover who also broke up her last engagement. He was always trying to befriend me too and act like we were best friends. I have never felt less of a man, more ashamed and hurt than when this happened. I sacrificed a lot for her. I was there doing anything and everything for her and her family when her dad very slowly passed away, and she ends up treating me like a pet she could get rid of when she got bored. I still can't remember a few months of time after that happened. I was in a bad place. Edit. I just realized I never finished this up. It took a while to get my head straight. My best friend of over 20 years, to me a brother and family, helped me out so much. He made sure I was going to be okay and took me out to blow off steam. We took an awesome trip to some fun butt spots with a few other people. I owe him so much for the help. My family really helped too. I ended up meeting my fiancé now about six months after I had that stuff happen. We have been together for over five years and we will be celebrating our first daughter's birthday on June 29th. Amazing what has happened since then. My one advice is don't ever give up or think you are worthless. You are worth everything to somebody out there no matter what. I can say I'm almost embarrassed by how I reacted back then, Lowell. Add it again. I never expected this to get this much attention. Thank you everybody for the kind words. And yes, my ex and I were together for about four years. I will say after I met my new fiancé now, about a month into dating, I got a new job and got to say good riddance to the last of my ex. One of the greatest things ever. The oddest thing too was my best friend who stuck with me actually had his dad pass away my last week at work. My last day, I had told them I needed to leave at 3 p.m. to go help my best and his family with last-minute wake and funeral stuff. They told I can't leave and they won't let me. After how my ex got everybody there to somehow feel really bad for her about leaving me, and I got left with people telling me how they feel bad for her, I just dropped my stuff on the ground and left. I remember the supervisor saying you were going to get into lots of trouble, and I looked at her dead in the eyes and go, What? Am I going to get fired? And just started laughing on my way out. Story 15. My wife at the time told me that she had called a local radio station, which often discusses hardships that military families go through and sometimes gives away $1,000 to a family in need of help. She said that she informed the radio station of my deployment and how I didn't come back the same, and she told them about our daughter, two months premature and only eight months old at the time, who had numerous health problems. My wife explained to me that the radio station hadn't given away the $1,000 in quite a few weeks so they were going to give us $10,000 for her telling such a heartfelt story. She called me while I was at work to tell me what had happened, and I was really excited. Asked my SN Coic to help me draw up a savings plan and figure out which debts should be paid off first, etc. Things were looking up. I get home that night, and rather than being greeting with an enthusiastic hug, she points to the loft and mouths, Not now, I'm on the phone. So I go upstairs and wait for her to finish. While I was waiting, I could hear her saying things like, yeah, I can get those papers to you and no problem, I can have that ready by tomorrow. Hmm, maybe they need identification and proof of my deployment or something, whatever. Fast forward to later that night and like usual, I'm having trouble sleeping. I decide to get on the computer and listen to the podcast from the radio show. After a few searches, I find it and start listening to it. This is where my blood starts to boil. She told the DJs that she was a single lady living on her own and that her sister married a Marine and they had a child named Marie our daughter's middle name. She goes on to say that Marie is now in her custody after the Marine husband, me, sort of, was defeated in Afghanistan, and the mother, her IRL single sister with no kids v. Jackie, was defeated in a car wreck, and Marie was now my wife's responsibility. Hundreds of people called in and offered to help, many of which owned business and wanted to offer things like baby supplies or completely furnishing a nursery for her. Literally, thousands of people had heard this nonsense fabricated story, including some of my co-workers. It was the radio station she was on the phone with, and they were asking her to provide death certificates and a birth certificate for Marie, which is why I was shooed away. Story 16. I made dinner and baked a chocolate cake for her birthday. She came home that night weeping about her problems. Work is rough. Her friends are all jerks. Her parents are this and that is that, etc. I consoled her as I had every night for the past three years and tried to convince her to eat. She proceeded to lecture me on words to say to properly comfort her. When a girl says blah, you are supposed to say blah, blah, blah. And in that instant, I just ran out of fudge. It's like the needle has been on E for a while now, and the low fudge indicator has been on for months. And now the last fumes of fudge have finally been used up. I packed up all my stuff into my car, grabbed the cat, and left. 
I realize it's not the dramatic explosive end like most of these stories, nor does it paint me in the best light. But sometimes these things just sputter and pass away. Story 17. We were together for four years, married for a pube hair over a year, when I was working two jobs considering a third, and she sat at home, unemployed, again, for the fifth time in a six-month period. They don't respect me, so she quit. This job isn't fulfilling, so she quit. Everybody gangs up on me, so she quit, etc., etc. Our young puppy was not taken care of. House was a mess, and I just worked anywhere from 10. 14 hours, but sure dear. I'll walk the dog and do the dishes and get the laundry going. No problem. Watching TV or reading are difficult things to do all day. Then I call her one day from work, excited that I'm getting out early. She says she can't talk right now in a hush-hush manner and a man's voice in the background. You can't talk right now? Why not? You have no job and don't do a goddamn thing around the house? Brat what? Who's he? What the alarms is going on? So I'm working my dork and balls off to pay our bills and provide for us while you alarms around? I don't think so. She decides to stay with some family to take time to figure out if we want to stay together. I was so blindsided by everything that was going on and said we should talk and resolve this together. Why take time and separation to decide? Well, because this way she can alarms everyone she sees between our house and her mother's house, of course. She comes home one day because she needs clothes and puts some old random clothes in a bag, but sneakily grabbed all of her lingerie. I didn't notice until I was putting away the laundry she didn't do and noticed it was all gone. Circumflex, that was the moment I left. I didn't give alarms anymore. I'm done. It's not worth it. The lies, manipulation, selfishness, all of it. I'm done. I'm not going to be your little brat anymore. No more free meal ticket for you, you crud. Then, for her final power play, she did the classic, I'm suicidal, I'm an alcoholic, bipolar love addict, and went to a mental hospital. She was released in three days, diagnosed with nothing. Bye, brat. As much as it absolutely defeats me, I even let her keep the dog, because it would be a better life for him. She has a yard and her family's dogs that he grew up with and played with. I had to move to my parents' basement with no yard, and I work a new job on an off shift. Now I'm moving across the country, with a better job, with a better, prettier woman, in a better town, minus a complete psychopath. Even if nobody reads this, it was slightly therapeutic to type out. Story 18. She got drunk on Christmas Eve and told me that she had been using crystal meth again, and that she would always be an addict, because it was her first love, and it was there for her when she was a teenager and her mother passed away. She finally said she loved it more than she loved being a wife or a mother, and that plenty of people lead normal lives while still being users. It crushed me. She was so hungover the next morning that she missed Christmas at my parents' house with our three-year-old son. I tried to speak to her about it for the next few weeks, and she refused to acknowledge the conversation. And things finally came to a head when she started inviting a couple of known heroin dealers into our home regularly, and threatened to move out when I asked that she not bring them around our house or our son anymore. I told her we needed to talk, me, her, and my parents who were trying to help. She flipped out and disappeared for days, and when she tried to come home, I had her stuff packed up. Story 19. I didn't want a divorce when I realized her drinking was becoming a serious problem. I didn't want a divorce when she ended up comatose from liver failure. I didn't want a divorce when the hospital bills broke through the million-dollar cap. I didn't want a divorce when she came out of the coma and tried to get her life back on track. I didn't want a divorce when she became addicted to opioids. I didn't want a divorce when she became addicted to Ambien. I didn't want a divorce when her pill doctor was arrested and she couldn't get her medicates anymore. I didn't want a divorce when she started drinking again. I didn't want a divorce when I was broke, unemployed, and hopeless, and all I could think of was how to keep food in our kitchen and my son in school. It was then I realized that if she went back up north and lived in the same town as her large family, she could get the help necessary to get better and I could reduce expenses and see our son graduate high school. The moment I said, yup, I want a divorce, was the day she left. Her brother had come down and would drive a U-Haul back up north with her and her stuff. That day, she decided, and became adamant, that she was taking our only vehicle as well. We lived 13 miles from supermarkets, fast food, gas stations, etc., and 26 miles from my son's school. Not having a vehicle wasn't an option, so I stood my ground. She got so mad, and we fought so hard. My son got involved, screaming at her that she can't strand us, and she needed to leave right now. So she left and I started getting back on my feet. The following year, I flew her back for her son's graduation. We were cordial, had a pretty good time, then she left, and that's the last I heard from her until the following year when I was served divorce papers. We're now divorced, I've moved, and I'm back to being confident and successful. I've talked to her once or twice since then, and I'm happier than I've ever been. Story 20. Protibake atu bebrot lika i pradetebu. Ebakeu predeta topibate pu. Gegu jubu obla etu klate titata? 
Igi keka ga popu a pletogri, a oplo drajet laku blidriu, dloj dugri i biple. Plabut pipra ko igu patloi, ta poklo go ta pabe ipra pejgu dlaj obi. Bloj ju i tipra bakoki bjoj di iđekra, va podra tipri pribo pruto ko abete. Plebla bude de tuta krugera babu gotiki, džeja i toki kudu biguti. Degi aut lube pritigu ubli, to grupi de dedrati duda krikijete bripu, a go paj baje dao kaj kudrad li preki. E kritu čidi, i epeke ki teo te boje glududu. Guga bi debri krebu kađi bi igo. Tok je upri ga tlego ga piko a pugidi e glao kopa. E tega butra dride gi dlagu ejtoje. Bida pe buti peki gluga ki plajpitu dej bruti. A graje a prepi dluta bepe. Uge epo bi i koa o teki ka ga tadi. A petlo bo apja peči bi buke. Pape bobu baka boblik upra a ki aje itli. Pliku i bu džupi brej prej tlabo. Wej i pli o upregible praje oda e bate tepa. Pa bu tu bje bakaj peko o poblato gide o oko. Tikro o ebi gege gaj ujta tabi. Vo teo dje gidu glau tu tu pu. A kadi ti oku tugi ja kaj pukri te gi pupi. I o i tu tagi batruto. Story 21. This is going to sound really stupid, because it is. But you have to remember I was not happy. I was trying to make her happy. She was really into running half marathons and claimed that I did not support her. Even though I did everything to support her, including started running to participate in her hobby to show support. In the end, doing it was not enough. I had to want to do it. Anyway, end rant. The story I drove her down to her race because she had to have me there for all her races. Got up at 4 a.m., drove her to the race, walked her to the queue. This is the point in which she should turn to me and say, Bye, baby. I'll see you in two hours. Kiss, I love you. But instead, she puts her headphones on, does not say a word, does not turn around to wave or smile. It was like I was not there. I actually said out loud, Oh, wow. We're going to get a divorce. She fought with me because she wanted me at every race. But it was not about me being there to support her running. It was about me being a chauffeur. Or maybe it was about control. I do not know, really. Man, I need a hug. Edit. Wow, thanks for the hugs, Reddit. Amazing to wake up to see that. It did actually make me feel better. Story 22. Probably replying too late to be seen, but hey, here we go. So not married, but a couple months from sealing the deal. We started drifting apart, and I realized that I, when she wasn't home or was mad and not speaking to me, that I was way happier. I wasn't looking for a reason to end it, but she gave me enough of them. Constantly demasculating me and belittling me. Telling me I was worthless and couldn't amount to anything. Like brat, I bought us a house. She told me I would never be good enough to be a father, and she would never have a kid with me. Well, pack your stuff and get out. I raised her son and helped him through school more than she ever did. First couple months, I was miserable, but it passed. Met another girl, and we had our first baby last month. Little three-month early premier. It gets better. Story 23. My ex was one hell of a disaster. Yet I stood up by her and tried to work with the hand I had been dealt, so to speak, because she was my wife. I discovered she was cheating on me. I expelled her from my house. As the rage subsided, we started talking again. I convinced her to move back in, and we agreed, as she had suggested when I first confronted her, to go to therapy together. She promised to never contact the guy again. Five months later, as I am finally facing the fact that she lies to me constantly and about all kinds of things, besides the usual not putting up with her share of the effort, expecting me to foot the bill on everything, not sharing stuff she should be sharing with her husband, etc., I discover she's talking to the guy again. So she keeps cheating and I don't trust her word one bit? I'm done here. Now we had a kid together, and this was in late November. So I chose to extend my misery for seven more weeks, so I wouldn't ruin my son's Christmas. I counted the days until a January 15th, when I kicked her out for good. Those weeks weren't that difficult, actually, because she had made me miserable for years. And this period at least had a clear ending date. Divorced now, and still bitter about all the wasted years with that undeserving brat. Story 24. I was traveling for work. We'd been having issues. Turns out I thought they were workable, and she was already done. Led me along, though. Had two kids, been together nine years, married seven. It was agony for me, worst period of my life. The only thing that kept me fighting was my kids. Didn't want them to grow up in a split situation. Was willing to suffer for them. I was out of town for work for a few days, and our dog was gone when I got back. She had given it to the neighbor who then just gave it to some friend out of town. I spent a year looking for that dog. I still think about it, and hope he lived the last half his life happy because he loved our family. The reason? She was just tired of taking care of him. He was a great dog. Really smart, well-trained, great with the kids. How can someone just do that? That's when I knew she wasn't who I thought she was. Fast forward 11 years. She's been married, divorced, and remarried. Has adopted and dumped like 15 cats and dogs over the years. A WTF. They aren't furniture. The two kids I have with her are remarkably well-adjusted. I have them half the time. Our custody situation is pretty great. 
She's a decent mom, just horrible about commitments to husbands and pets. I've been remarried five years to the most incredible woman on the planet. Looking back, I have no regrets, except for losing track of my dog. I'll never forgive myself or her for that. Story 25. I worked, she played. She woke me up in the middle of the night to grab the extra blanket off the bed. I expected to find her disgruntled on the couch alone the next morning. I found her in the guest bed with another woman, both naked. No forewarnings or clue-ins, just despondent betrayal. I woke her for answers and got a whole lot of mumbles. Decided to split for space. That weekend, we both ended up at the same bar on the same dance floor. I thought she'd followed me there to make amends. She'd brought the same girl and completely ignored me when I called out to her. When I walked up to her, she pretended I was a stranger. I told her I'm not going to play any games and didn't know what was going on. She said she didn't want to be married. I gave her the ring back and went to tell my friends goodbye that night. I didn't want to tell them why I felt so embarrassed. She saw me talking to my friends and decided to make out in front of us with her new woman directly on the dance floor eight feet away from where I stood while everyone stared. Looking back now, I realize she probably was scared to come out. I can give her credit for that. But she was an awful person for the way she did it and for never having the courage to say to my face whatever she was feeling. I thought we were best friends. I thought we were going to be together forever. She asked me to marry her. Now I'm just grateful for not being with a liar and a coward. I've made a fresh start. Sold everything. Traded my entire wardrobe and style to feel like I'm in a new life. Sure, I've lost more money than I ever thought imaginable. And the dog. I just keep optimistic that I'll find someone who deserves my time. I don't focus on the past and I have faith in God in the future. Whoever I marry next will be grateful for a man like me and loyal. But until then, I'm going to enjoy the single life again and just play. Story 26. When my kids from my previous marriage told me on the phone, they were not coming to visit anymore because of her. I always felt that I could manage the conflict between her and my kids. I was wrong. The oldest was around 16 and finally stood up to the situation. I told her we were getting divorced as soon as I got off the phone. I had threatened her with divorce a few times prior, but she always told me she'd try harder. This time, she knew I was 100% serious. She moved out within a week. That was a few years ago. My kids and I have a great relationship now. I'm still single and loving every bit of it. Story 27. Not me, but my dad, whom I share a strong bond with. Christmas Day, my sister and I had just come down to open presents. Somehow, my dad had forgotten one specific present for me that I didn't even want. Unbeknownst to my sister and I, my dad was led outside and called a useless piece of stuff over and over by my mom. He had been emotionally abused by her for years before. He finally grew a backbone and said, Alarms you, I want a divorce. Calmly walked back inside and enjoyed the rest of Christmas morning with us. The next day, my mom informed him that she will not pay for any braces. I was just starting to get them, sis needed them, and neither of our colleges at all. I'm going to college next year. My mom has paid $250 for half my college deposit, out of an estimated $110,000 for total attendance fees. Upsetting brat. Story 28. There were many moments that got me closer to leaving, but after having our son and her, knowing how excited I was for my first Father's Day, she forgot got mad at me for reminding her and told me to go out with my buddy. To me, that isn't the point of Father's Day. She always forgot my birthday and never did anything for it, told me I could sleep with other people if I wanted. I told her that I married her, not someone else. The time she said I'd love to be a single parent someday in casual conversation, told me I wasn't as intelligent as her because I didn't go to university, even though I was making good money and was part owner of a business. While she quit, was fired every few months. When my son was still breastfeeding and she refused to feed him one night because she was angry at me, and that's when he started on formula. Or when I got home from visiting a friend out of town and she didn't even realize I was gone for 12 hours. Story 29. Saturday before Easter of this year, she came at me with her desire to go to Germany and see friends that would pay for her round trip there and back. We got into an argument about it. I voiced my suspicion that something more was going on. We didn't speak Sunday. Then Monday rolls around and she tells me she's done. So I get home early. Look around on her laptop and find chats between her and her German girlfriend. I invade her privacy because she had cheated before. She had been planning on divorcing me since November last year. So I call her at work and tell her to pack her stuff and get out. I feel so much better not having the trust issues with her. But this whole ordeal is wreaking havoc on my three children. Story 30. So I am partly to blame. I am not without fault in this. While was deployed to Afghanistan, she had an affair. This is far too common a story on its own. At the time, I was still very religious. I sought to repair the marriage and make things work. I told her I never wanted to talk about it again, and that she was forgiven yet on notice, so to speak. For the next two years, we were both pretty crappy. She never believed me when I told her she was forgiven, and she truly was. She was scared I would cheat on her to get revenge. This made her jealous and controlling. She didn't want me to have female friends, 
associate with other female soldiers in my unit, typical crazy brat stuff. This was a big factor in the divorce, but not the tipping point. I did learn from it, thought. I'm not a player, but I won't ever be with a jealous gal again. Again, I was not without blame. I had a lot of anger and problems when I came back. I'd get off work and go buy some 40s. Sit in a parking lot and drink rather than go home and try to fix things with her. My anger often got the best of me. I'd never raise a hand against her, let alone my voice. But she would push me to a point where I knew I would. So I'd leave for a couple of days to cool off. Maybe this wasn't the best course of action, but it kept me sane. I eventually got bored and volunteered for a tour of duty in South Korea. My first week out of the country, she messed another man. That was the point where I was done. I married far too young and could have been a better husband. But I take it as a learning experience. Something that did make me a better man and a better husband for whatever girl comes into my life. Story 31. I started dating a high school friend when I was 23. Two months after dating, she who shall not be named got laid off. Six months later, she still wasn't working and I was pressured into marrying her by her parents. Like a dumb butt, I gave in. We got married and two years later, she still hadn't found work. Not because of the economy, but because she couldn't get off her lazy butt and look. At the time, she was 25, didn't have a job, and didn't have a license. Her excuse was, how will I get to work? A couple of times a week, she would go out with friends while I was busting my butt off working three jobs. She opened a credit card in both our names and would use it for shopping. I remember losing my stuff one day because she spent over $300 on four bras at Victoria's Secret. You might be wondering, how in the hell? She was a natural 42 DD. Once you break 38 DD mark, brass skyrocket in price. Big boobs are expensive, gentlemen. Every time I paid that stuff off, she would go out and rack up the debt again. Finally, I decided I had had enough. Nothing I could do would change her, and I was no longer emotionally attached to her. On the first of the month of June 2010, I paid off the credit card, called the credit company, and canceled the card. I then paid the rent in full. I told the management to take me off the lease and that we would be out by July 1st. I secured a place for myself and prepared for the stuff storm that was headed my way. The following day, I got home and she was sitting down watching some stuff show on TV. The laundry hadn't been done, the dishes were still dirty, and the place was a mess. This was a common occurrence that no matter how many times I begged her to clean while I was gone, never got done. I walked into the living room, shut off the TV, dropped my house key on the table, and said, Voldemort, I'm upsetting done. Despite trying everything to motivate you and doing everything I can to make this work, it's just simply not going to happen. I paid the rent for the month and you have 30 days to find a place and move out. I'm leaving everything here for you, TVs, couch, bed, Wii, computer, etc., and I'm only taking my clothes from the closet. I will be out tonight. I gathered my clothes and left. I felt relieved. So much stress gone, just like that. I didn't get but three miles before my phone was ringing off the hook with her mom yelling at me and delivering death threats. The next day, I had my attorney contact her and start the divorce process. It has been heaven ever since. So that's how I broke free from the Dark Lord's spell. Story 32. I was standing next to one of my best friends, waiting for the ski lift to start up, when his brand new wife leaned over and said, Of course it's broken if their mechanic is a Mexican. The shock in his face leads me to believe that's the moment he knew they would divorce in a few months. Edit. To answer some questions. No, she was not joking. We were all frustrated waiting for the ski lift to come back on, so she was dead serious and angry at the mechanic. They got married extremely fast, just over a year, because she was extremely attractive, and my friend was not thinking with his better head. As he gradually learned more about her, they broke it off around six months into their marriage. He is still to this day an idiot around women, which is dangerous because he is now a hedge fund manager.